Hi, I'm Kiefer Card. I'm an assistant professor with the Faculty of Health Sciences at Simon Fraser University and a member of the Scientific Advisory Panel with Jeff Newell. So can you tell us a bit about yourself and the work that you do and how that relates to social connection and social health? Yeah, so I'm a social and behavioral epidemiologist uh, who specializes in kind of understanding um, how behavior affects health and how our environments, both social and ecological, kind of shape our behavior. Um, I started my work focusing on things like STIs and sexual uh, transmitted diseases and infections and sexual behavior, uh, but it really kind of that began to help me touch on everything from uh, substance use and mental health. Um, and in each one of the areas of research that I studied, I always kept coming back to this idea that um, social connection was really at the core of a lot of the problems that communities uh, across Canada face, um, including, uh, you know, gained by sexual men, uh, migrants, youth who use drugs, uh, just again and again, social environment in which people lived in really was seeming to have a more important determinant on their behavior than much of anything else and as a key motive for why they behave the way they do. And so um, uh, when the pandemic hit, of course, everybody was awakened to the importance of social connection. And that, uh, that was also true of me. And I decided, okay, I keep seeing social connection again and again. So I'm actually gonna shift my research to really study and focus on social connection itself and how that impacts, um, how our communities impact our behavior and health. So you have spent two years gathering data for the Canadian Social Connection Survey in partnership with the General Project. Can you share what you think the top three insights are telling us about the social health of Canadians? Yeah, so the Canadian Social Connection Study is a series of surveys taking place each year to really monitor how people are recovering uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic and all the associated social disruptions. Um, and really, uh, we've been able to mine a lot of insights from the study. I think three of the most important are First and foremost, I think most people assumed that after the COVID lockdowns ended, we would just return to normal. But in fact, is what we've seen is there's been very little change in people's social connection following the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and while immediately after the pandemic and lockdowns, people were a bit more enthusiastic to connect, um, over the long run, they've become complacent again. And actually, we're seeing some lower levels of social connection this, uh, as of last summer than what we even saw the summer before. And so I think it really highlights the need to educate and motivate people to go out and get connected. One of the uh, uh, second finding is that um, I think that the importance of uh, social connection. I think many people understand that it's important to their health and well-being, but they face a lot of internal barriers as well as external barriers to getting social connected. You know, demands on time, uh, you know, financial restraints, uh, but a lot of social anxiety, a lot of fear of rejection, a lot of worry that other people won't like them. And we're finding that that, that internal I guess self-efficacy or ability to go out and connect is one of the biggest barriers stopping people from getting connected. And so I think it again highlights why we need a campaign like Genwell to go out and educate and help people and empower them and catalyze them to uh, connect with others. I think maybe the third finding that I would highlight from the Canadian Social Connection Survey is the extent to which um, while every person has different needs socially or you know, you know, the number of friends you have, how much social time you get. While everybody varies in that, there are some general rules that we can see as being protective of your physical health. And so we're working to use this data and the literature and consultations with experts around the globe to understand what are those basic rules uh, for social well-being. And from the survey, we're seeing that really everyone, regardless if you're an introvert or an extrovert, you need three to five close friends to really minimize the amount of loneliness that you experience. We also need something like two hours a day of social connection. So that could be time around the or water cooler at work, or you know, it could be uh, talking with your spouse in the evening, whatever it might look like. We're looking that we see that if you get about two hours a day, then you seem to be, seem to be really protected. 
And so these sorts of little rules that help us understand how much and what types of social connections and relationships we need are probably one of the richest things that we're finding from the study. Now, why do you think most people have never been educated on the importance of their social connections and social health? There are so many forces in this world competing for our time and our interest. And I think it's been um, always assumed that social connection would just be something that you would do naturally. You know, uh, you have a family, you have friends, you're going to take care of it. Nobody ever thought that you would need to tell people to go out and get socially connected. But exactly the opposite is true. If you look at data and long-term trends, the number of friends that people have is declining, the amount of time people are spending with friends, the picnics, the cohesion in the workplace, uh, cohesion in schools, political divides, online hate, all of these things are moving us to a more and more disconnected society. And I don't think people have really paid attention to this because they have taken it for granted that that's just the way things are, you know, technology and apps have come and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, but there is actually a lot we can do about it. And I think education is the absolute first step. And so um, while we haven't really done that to date, you know, if you think about like, you know, uh, warnings of smoking or warnings of uh, poor nutrition or the need to exercise, even these concepts of health are only relatively recently 70s, 2000s is when we really start to see this evidence come about. And so social connections a bit late um, in terms of the public health messaging, but it's certainly emerging as clearly one of the most important factors that you can do to uh, promote your health and well-being. And what role does the Canadian Alliance for Social Connection and Health play in solving the growing issues of social isolation, disconnection, and loneliness in Canada and the world? So the Canadian Alliance for Social Connection and Health is kind of like the sister organization to GenWell. It aims to help engage policymakers, decision makers, researchers, kind of the professional class of society in order to uh, push forward that kind of social and structural change, you know, get more funding into programs that support people on the ground doing connections. And then GenWell is that kind of public facing campaign that raises awareness and builds connection for the public. So really working together hand in hand, um, the Canadian Alliance for Social Connection and Health and GenWell have this kind of shared miss mission of building awareness of the importance of social connection and identifying what we can do as a whole of society to address those, uh, those um, issues and, and make sure that everyone has access to healthy relationships and a supportive community. Now, we'd love to know some of the things that you do to maintain strong social connections in your life. Yeah, I think, uh, you, you know, there's a number of things that anyone can do. Some of my favorite things are finding ways to combine things that I like to do socially. So going out to eat with friends, I have to eat anyways, might as well do it with a friend or a family member. You know, I uh, like to go on hikes and walks, so might as well take somebody along. It doesn't take that much to, um, you know, reach out to somebody, ask them, hey, I'm going to do this. Do you want to join me? I think this, what it means is also that we have to build ourselves that network. And I think that's one of the things I've really started to pay attention more, especially since, you know, working on the Canadian Social Connection Study, is how I like pull together my social network and really make sure that I have those relationships that I can call on when I need support or when I need connection or when I want to go to the movies with somebody, my partner doesn't want to see that movie. You know, being able to call on people to do those things that you might do anyways is a great way to uh, make that activity more enjoyable. And I think that that's, a, you know, that's really critical is because, you know, I'm, I'm a busy professional. I don't have a necessarily a lot of time to uh, do other things. But if I can, you know, if I can combine like going to the gym even with somebody, you know, I'm going to go to the gym anyways, might as well make it a social occasion. And so I think it's that like synergy of like what I'm going to do in my life and how I'm going to connect with others while doing it. So those are some great tips, but maybe some more general tips for Canadians to build stronger social connections for themselves or for someone else. Yeah, I think uh, I think most importantly, one of the things that we're seeing most, as I mentioned, that sense of self and self-esteem, those internal barriers are the biggest connection. I think some of the things that people really need to understand is really getting themselves over that. Remember that people will probably like you. Uh, they're probably more worried about how you perceive them than you than than they perceive you. Um, and if we if you just take that first step to go out get connected, 
you'll probably have a much better success uh, than you think we will. People tend to have a negative bias. Your body, your brain wants you to spend as little energy as possible because your brain, while it's only about you know 2% of your body mass, it takes up 20% of the calories. And what is the most important thing that the brain does? It's managed social relationships. And so I think we have this natural kind of like drive to shy away from so, uh, social connection because you know it's a little bit uh, of an energy expensive thing. But so you have to get over that and remember, oh, but in reality, I really need this social connection. And I think if people can really uh, think to themselves about, you know, the, that sort of internal barriers and how they can overcome that and just take the first step, then I think that's really the key to, um, you know, starting to have a very healthy social life.